In our question of the day, we wanted to be pushing something at a constant uh, rate of 3 meters per second, uh, which means uh, that it was going at a, at a constant velocity. Uh, and so we know that a constant velocity Uh, according to Newton's first law, has to mean that uh, all the forces on the object must be balanced. Uh, because we know the only way an object can move at a constant velocity is if all the forces are balanced. Of course, if they're all balanced, that means they all cancel out, uh, which means that the net force has to be zero. Uh, so let's think about what that would look like. Um, if we've got maybe a little sort of stick diagram here, we've got our box, we've got our person pushing it, and we've got our dot. And of course the dot is the most important thing. You can draw the diagram as just the dot if you want, um, but you know, adding uh, this stuff around it helps us see what's going on. And so uh, we know gravity is going to be pulling down uh, on the box, and so we can draw a force of gravity coming down. Uh, but we also know that the box is not going to start falling through the floor. Uh, so there must be something balancing this out because it's not going to start uh, falling downwards. It's not going to have any some sort of downwards component to its velocity. Uh, and that's got to be the floor pushing back up. Uh, and so if you wrote the force from the floor, uh, that's fine for now, but the type of force that it is, uh, is a normal force. Uh, it's just the force from the surface of the floor pushing uh, perpendicular to and away from the floor, straight up. So we can write normal force. Can make a little note from the floor if we want. Um, the person... Uh, actually, no, let's talk about the friction next. We said it was a rough floor, and so if we're moving across the floor, we can see from the way this is set up that the direction we're moving appears to be to the right. And so what I'm going to do to indicate the direction we're moving uh, is put a little velocity vector off to the side. This is not part of the free body diagram. We would never, ever, ever under any circumstance connect our velocity vector to our free to the dot on our free body diagram, um, but it gives context to our diagram. We know that the forces on our free body diagram show something that is moving to the right. Uh, and if it's moving to the right, that means that the rough floor is going to be exerting some friction, uh, trying to slow it down, which is going to be to the left. Now, we don't have any information about how big the force of friction is compared to the normal force of the force of gravity. We know these two have to be the same as each other. We don't know anything right now about how big the friction is compared to these. And so I'm just going to draw another arrow, uh, sort of whatever, whatever I feel like. Um... Just fits nicely on the diagram. I'll do that. I guess so on mine, uh, it was a larger force. On yours, it could have been smaller. That's fine. doesn't really matter. Um, we know we got some friction from the floor, and that's trying to slow the crate down as it moves to the right. And so in order for us to continue moving at a constant velocity, all the forces have to be balanced out. Something needs to be balancing out or canceling friction so that friction can't win and friction can't slow it down. And so that means that our person has to be pushing with a force that is exactly equal to our force of friction. And so I want these two arrows to be the same length, just pointing in opposite directions. And I'm going to label that Fa for my applied force. Uh, something we can add to our diagram uh, to give a little clarity to what exactly uh, we're trying to show here, like that these two arrows are canceling each out and these two arrows are canceling each other out, um, is just a, just you know, adding a little equation or expression onto these. So FA is equal to FF. So if this was the AP test uh, and a grader was looking at this and they were trying to figure, you know, maybe they thought this was, you know, a couple millimeters longer than this. And that's not what you intended, but you don't want to bring a ruler with you to draw your diagrams perfectly. If you just write that you mean your applied force is equal to your force of friction and these arrows are, you know, close-ish to the same length, now we know those two were meant to be the same. Uh, we could also, the normal force from the floor is equal to the force of gravity. Uh, and so that's good, and getting used to adding expressions like that to our diagram uh, helps communicate information clearly, but it's also going to help us when we get to problem solving.
Uh, the other thing we can do uh, is indicate the net force. And net force, I mentioned before, is never, ever, ever going to go directly on our diagram, not on the dot, but it can go off to the side. Uh, and in this case, uh, the net force should be what we get when we just add them all together. So this plus this cancels out, this plus this cancels out, and so our net force in this case is zero. Uh, which is what we wanted if all of our forces are going to be balanced. Um, but if you drew, you know, this free body diagram and then off to the side, you indicated that the net force is zero. Uh, that would be another way of communicating that what this diagram is trying to show is that all of these forces are canceling out. And so if you accidentally made one arrow, you know, two millimeters longer than the other, you're clarifying that that is the intention of the diagram to show that everything cancels out. Um, I want to quickly talk about uh, two other uh, sort of the wrong answers to this and some important things we can get out of them uh, that are going to be relevant to today's lesson. Um, so this is the correct diagram. Uh, and if this is not what you had in your notes, uh, just go ahead and either draw it in or modify what you had to match this. Uh, the most important thing is this central diagram. Um, but also, if you didn't indicate the direction it was moving, put a little velocity arrow off to the side. Um, and if you didn't indicate the net force off to the side, just go ahead and do that. Okay. So, incorrect answer one. Uh, the person pushes harder than friction. Uh, and this is, this is the most common wrong answer. Uh, this is due to our misconception of in our everyday lives constantly having to deal with the force of friction uh, and getting this, this misconception in our heads that we constantly have to be pushing just to keep something moving. Uh, really, it's just that we need to cancel out any forces that are trying to slow it down. And if there aren't any forces trying to slow it down, we don't need to push it. Um, but this is just because of our daily experience and the fact that we're always feel, dealing with friction and we often don't think about the friction. A lot of people think you have to be pushing. Uh, there has to be some sort of like forward force to make the, the crate go forward. Uh, and so what this would look like. Our person has three arms. That's weird. Okay. Uh, so most people don't have any issues with the idea that we still got gravity in the normal force. They got to cancel each other out, so we can put that in there. Uh, and then we got our force of friction going backwards. And then what people want to do is they want to assign some sort of applied force that is bigger than that force of friction. And it could be a lot bigger, could be a little bit bigger, depending on who's drawing it. Uh, they're all wrong, though. Um, and so they draw something like this. Um, and I would like you to uh, put this in your notes. Make sure that uh, you note that it is actually incorrect. Um, but let's think about what, what the consequence of this would be. So we know the crate is moving this way. Uh, and so what this diagram shows us is if we find the net force... Uh, the net force is not zero in this case. Fg and Fn cancel each other out, but the applied force and the friction don't. Uh, if we add these together, we have a large component to the right and a smaller one to the left, and so the applied force is going to wind up winning. We're going to wind up having a net force to the right, uh, and its magnitude, uh, we can write an expression for this, and this is something we're going to have to get used to doing in problem solving. Um, Actually, you know, just, just take, uh, you don't even need to pause the video. I'll just uh, stop talking for a couple seconds. Write down an expression using uh, FA and FF. How would we find? How would we find the net force? And so it should be, hopefully this is straightforward after our vectors unit. You just take the applied force, subtract the force of friction. Uh, so if this was 5 newtons and this was 3 newtons, the net force would be 2 newtons forward. Um, and this is this common misconception people have. People think that for the object to move forward at a constant velocity, there's got to be something pushing it forward, and that is not true. We know from Newton's first law uh, that objects in motion will remain at a constant velocity unless acted on by an unbalanced force. Uh, and so here we have an unbalanced force, which means this is not going to have a constant velocity. Uh, 
Uh, in fact, we can even infer what's going to happen uh, if pushing exactly as hard as friction is going to make it go at a constant velocity. If we push any harder than friction, we're pushing it forward. That's just going to make it go faster and faster and faster, uh, which means that we have some kind of acceleration. Uh, since it's making it uh, accelerate, since it's making it get faster, we must have an acceleration in the same direction as our velocity. Remember, whenever the acceleration and the velocity have the same sign, we get faster. Um, so an unbalanced force, uh, not a constant velocity. Uh, in this case, it's going to get faster. Uh, and so we're going to have some sort of uh, acceleration to the right. Um, so our velocity to the right, accelerator to the right is going to cause it to get faster and faster and faster. Uh, and we'd like to be able to figure out what this acceleration is. If we knew these forces, could we figure out how quickly it's going to accelerate? Um, the other incorrect diagram that I just want to talk about quickly, not that a lot of people usually actually draw this one, but because it's the opposite, we can, we can see an important relationship here. Uh, so incorrect number two. Uh, is the person pushes uh, less than friction or not at all. Uh, and actually that not at all is probably the more common way that people might actually, uh, that people usually sort of have the, the misconception here uh, due to maybe misremembering something from the last uh, lecture. So we got our force of gravity and our normal uh, again. Uh, we still got our friction. And so maybe they remembered what I said about that, that hover puck, that little hovercraft that we had uh, in saying that you don't need to push it forward to make it go forward. Uh, and then thinking that meant that the, the answer is that it's some sort of like trick question and that the person doesn't need to push uh, forward at all to make it keep going uh, forward. Um, but remember, that was only if we got rid of friction. When I turned the little hovercraft on, there was no friction. That's why we didn't need to push it forward to make it go forward. If there's friction, we need to cancel that friction out, not because there needs to be, not because it needs a forward force to go forward, but because it needs to not have a backwards force to go forward. Um, and so uh, we could either have something uh, like this uh, where there's no applied force or maybe uh, they draw like a smaller applied force. Uh, in either case, uh, so Fn is equal to Fg, but Fa is less than the force of friction, potentially all the way down to zero. Uh, and so we can see in this case, our net force is going to be to the left. The force of friction is bigger than the applied force. And so... Our net force is going to wind up going to the left. And again, the net force never gets drawn on the diagram itself. It's never connected to the dot. It's just something we draw off to the side to do accounting. Uh, Fn and Fg cancel out, but the net force is going to be the force of friction minus the force of, uh, oh, minus the applied force. And I guess I want to be really clear about where, uh, how these are coming up. So I have Ff minus Fa, uh, Fa minus Ff. Uh, the order that those are in and the reason they're written like that uh, is because we are writing these as scalars. This is a length of a vector. You'll notice I do not have the little vector sign over my forces. And so this is saying take the magnitude of the force of friction and subtract the magnitude of the applied force. Uh, this is saying take the magnitude of the applied force and subtract the magnitude of the force of friction. Uh, of course, in both cases, it would also be true to say as a vector, take the vector... Uh, of the applied force and add the vector of the force of friction to get the net force vector. Um, but it is often easier to work in scalars. Uh, and so we assign uh, our directions uh, by using the arrows, uh, and then we write it as the scalar sum. So this is taking the scalars, not the vectors. Um, so uh, in this case, and this could be, you know, uh, as little as zero, in which case the net force would just be the force of friction. Uh, and so again, uh, we have an unbalanced force. Uh, which means we're not going to have a constant velocity. Uh, and if we don't have a constant velocity, uh, we're either going to get faster or slower. Um, and here, uh, friction's winning. And so we know friction wants to slow things down, and so if friction is winning, it must mean that it gets slower. 
Uh, and so for changing velocities, once again, we are accelerating, uh, but this time our acceleration has to be in the opposite direction of our velocity. Uh, and so if our velocity is to the right uh, and we are slowing down, that must mean that we have an acceleration to the left. Uh, so back in one-dimensional motion, this would be a positive velocity and a negative acceleration means you slow down. Um, but, you know, one dimension, two dimensions, three dimensions, doesn't matter. Uh, if your acceleration is in the opposite direction as your velocity, you'll slow down. We know we're slowing down, so whatever direction we do our velocity, our acceleration has to be the same direction. Uh, and so the thing that's going to connect this to uh, our, our next uh, lesson on Newton's second law is this relationship. Uh, notice that the net force always points in the same direction as the acceleration. Here, the net force was to the left, the acceleration's to the left. Here, the net force was to the right, the acceleration is to the right. And here, if the net force is zero, so it has no direction, the net force is also zero, and so it has no direction. So there's got to be some uh, significant connection between net force and acceleration.